Okay, everybody, today we did long division, and it's kind of hard. So before I start here on what the book has, let's just go back to something old. Example, if I had 5 divided into, oh, let's say 843. First of all, does 5 go into 843 evenly? No, we know it doesn't because it's not a 5 or a 0. So 5 is not a factor, but how does 5 divide into 843? Well, we say 5 goes into 8. We know it goes in one time. And then we multiply, right? We multiply 1 times 5, and we get 5. And we subtract. Remember doing that a long time ago? And if we subtract, we get a 3. Then the next step is we brought down the 4. And we put the 4 right here. And we got a 43. Now, 5 goes into 34. Well, how about 6 times? Because you know that 6 times 5 is 30. And then we subtract, right? Remember doing long division? We subtract. And we get a 4. And then the 3 comes all the way down, right? And we get a 3, makes it a 43. And then 5 goes to 43, 8 times. We know 8 goes into 5, 40 times. And we subtract, and we get a remainder of 3. Now, we don't go remainder 3, because that's back into elementary school. What we do is we take and say the answer is, the answer is... 168 and 3 fifths. That's our remainder out of 5 and 3 fifths. Now, that's basically middle school math or even elementary school math. What we want to do is do it with polynomials. Okay, so here's our example we have x cubed plus 12x squared plus 41x plus 72 divided by x plus 8. And then they go through the same process. Take the x plus 8, put it right there. So we're going to divide x plus 8 into x cubed plus 12x squared plus 41x plus 72. And here's what we do. x goes into x cubed, x squared times. And then we multiply. We multiply. That times that is x cubed. That times that is a positive 8x squared. And then we subtract. When I subtract, I always make mistakes, so I like to add a negative. I like to add a negative, so I add a negative by changing the signs. And that way I don't make a mistake. Um, so 12x minus 8x squared is a 4x. If I hadn't have done that, I might have put a 20x. But it's 12x squared minus 8x makes a 4x. So then I divide again, just like how we did the 5 over here. We divide again. So then x goes into 4x squared, 4x times, and again we then multiply. My 4x times x, my 4x times 8. 4x times x is a 4x squared. My 4x times 8 is 32. And again, we subtract. I always make mistakes, so I'm going to add a negative. So I change the sign so I don't make a dumb mistake because I'm good at doing that. And then 41x minus 32x makes a 9x. Bring down the x term. And then again, I go, okay. Uh, x goes into 9x, well, it's got to go in 9 times, and then I multiply. And I go 9 times x goes 9x, and 9 times 8 makes 72. And then I subtract. Again, I add the negatives, and I wind up with a remainder of 0. Now, this tells me that x plus 8 is a factor. So I know that my x plus 8 times my answer. And that's my answer right there, times my quotient x squared plus 4x minus 9 must equal this times this, this times this, must equal my original polynomial of x cubed plus 12x squared plus 41x plus 9. Okay. Now let's take this a step further. So we know that x, well, I'm sorry, we know x plus 8 is a factor. If it is a factor, x plus 8 is a factor because we've got a remainder of 0. So x plus 8 is a factor. So I'm going to take this a step further, okay? So we know that x plus 8 is a factor. 
So it's also a zero, okay? It's also a zero. If x plus eight is also a zero, then x plus eight equals zero. So x equals negative eight is my zero. So negative eight is a zero. If that's the case, then negative eight should make it zero. So if I plug in negative eight, so I'm gonna plug in, I'm gonna plug in x equals negative eight. All right, so if I do this, I'm gonna take my negative eight and plug it in. So I'm gonna go, okay, if I take into my original and take and plug in negative eight for all my x's, I'll have a negative eight cubed plus 12 times negative eight squared plus 41 times a negative eight plus 72. If I use my calculator, which I did earlier, I used my calculator, let me go ahead and show you. I think it's still on my calculator. Nope, it's not, it's been cleared. Anyway, it really does equal zero. Now this tells me something. So it tells me that if it is a factor, well, let's look at the next one, okay? So it says, here's the expression x minus seven. If I plug in, if x minus seven is a zero, then if I plug in seven, I should get zero. If I don't get zero, it is not a factor, okay? So they'll say the expression is a factor, so I know for sure if I plugged in seven, it will equal zero. And that's what we have to know today. So if you get a remainder of zero when you plug something in, it's going to be a zero. If you don't get a remainder of zero, it's not a zero. So in our homework today, I said, is x equal three a root? Well, if x equals three is a root, then if I plug it in, I should get a remainder of, well, I got, a, I got an answer of negative 144. This is not zero. If it's a factor, it would give me an answer of zero. This one is not a factor, so therefore it's not a zero, okay? Now on the back side, we divide it again, okay, on our homework. So um, our homework then is gonna be this worksheet, and if you're gonna do long division, do a synthetic, you're gonna plug in, do synthetic substitution. You're gonna have long division, and find out if something is a factor. If you have, if it goes in evenly, it's a factor. If you get a remainder of zero, it's a factor. Okay, that's all I have for today, and I will see you tomorrow.